an ultrasonic sensor fixed to a train detecting obstacles. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Columbia Engineering Group 2. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the members of the group. Our group consists of total number of three members, including myself, Gidney, Shamika, and Lakidu. Today, in this project presentation, we are going to discuss about the following sections given in the agenda. The agenda is as follows. Inspiration, the innovative idea, how the idea was finalized, how it works, the prototype, the benefits, pricing, marketing strategy, and future developments. Now I'm going to talk about what inspired us to innovate this idea. So before innovating this idea, we came across a problem that needed to be solved. So in our case, as you can see, if there's train accidents or accidents occurs in level crossings. So now we are going to give you a real life example of a level crossing accident happened in a rural area in Louisiana, USA. Train colliding with a truck, 2,000 collisions a year on the tracks. And tonight here, ABC's Deborah Roberts discovers something with those tracks and perhaps the signs. Can you actually see? A jaw-dropping moment in rural Louisiana. A Union Pacific Railroad freight train plowing into an 18-wheeler caught on the tracks. The driver scrambling to safety seconds before. This video captured by a couple just yards away. Oh gosh, look at that smoke. The train conductor and engineer were injured, but amazingly, no one died. Police tell ABC News the railroad signals appear to be working. It's a scene that plays out across the country all too often. Last year, there were roughly 2,000 train vehicle collisions, resulting in close to 250 deaths and nearly 1,000 injuries. Some because of drivers taking risks, like this one in Houston. And this in Florida, where the driver barely escapes. The engineer tries his best to stop, but he can take up to a mile for a speeding train to screech to a halt. In many cases, the driver is not to blame. Only 35% of rail crossings have flashing lights and gates. Denny and Vicki Moore's 17-year-old son Ryan was killed at this crossing in Ohio. As you can see, you've got all this vegetation, all these trees blocking the driver's view. And you're not required to stop. Right. at this crossing. The only time... Because it only says yield. And our contention has always been, how can you yield to something that you can't see? How These accidents are a frightening reminder to all of us that you have to be vigilant because one expert told us that a train hitting a car is like a car hitting a soda can. So, now I'm going to talk about who majorly suffers from train accidents. So mainly humans who have to cross unprotected rail crossings daily due to work and everything. And apart from that, train drivers, animals like elephants um, who get into accidents, you know, in countries um, like Sri Lanka, Africa. And except for that, governments of specific countries. Now I'm going to talk about some consequences happen due to train accidents. So in countries like Sri Lanka, one of the major type of train accidents are train animal collisions happen due to wild elephants. So why our group think that this is a major problem is not only because um, this uh, creates death and lifelong disabilities to animals and humans, but these kind of accidents can financially unstabilize the government too. The main reason is sometimes government might have to compensate the victims of a train accident. And apart from that, um, it takes tons of money to repair um, trains. And apart from them, um, vehicles that were involved, the other party's vehicle that were involved. So in addition to that, train accidents, um, creates traumatizing memories in train drivers' mind. So 
as you can see in overall, train accidents abuses living beings mentally, physically, and financially. So now I would like to call Lakendu to talk about the next segment. Yeah, thank you, Gidney. Now I'm going to introduce the innovative idea. Yeah, now this is a system made by using the technology of ultrasound wave. The ultrasonic sensor fixed externally in front of the train and connected to the monitor inside the train. The system detects the obstacle in front of the train and for the driver in a safe distance so that the driver can pull the emergency brake and stop the train colliding uh, from colliding with the obstacles. This innovation helps to prevent major accidents risking lives of people and animals. Now let's take a quick look at how the main component of the system, the ultrasonic sensor works. The ultrasonic sensor have two main parts, namely transmitter and receiver. The transmitter sends ultrasound waves in a 90 degrees angle forward direction continuously until it collides with the obstacle. When an ultrasound wave collides with an obstacle, it reflects back in the same direction and get detected by the receiver. The frequency level of sound, the sound wave differs according to the obstacle. Now, you can see the functionality, functionality of the system. This system consists of three elements, and they are namely monitor, ultrasonic sensor, and connecting wire. We use for uh, the monitor we use for this system can convert data given by ultrasonic sensor to information. By using this element, compressed monitor, which is connected to the sensor, will display the type of uh, obstacle and the distance between the train and the obstacle. Now I invited Shamika to continue next segment. Thank you, Lakidu. Uh, now I'm going to talk about how the idea was finalized for the group project presentation. Pro Firstly, the researchers were mainly conducted by each team member of the team. Next, uh, we all gathered information and conversed within the group the press cluster of advisors were initially given out by the lecture in charge and later on to ensure the validation of the idea we contacted a railroad engineer through a friend as a result for all these conversations change were made to the initial idea and the idea was gradually developed Now, I'm going to show the comment given by Mr. Sumit Garlage, the railroad engineer we contacted to validate the, our idea. Next, uh, I would like to call upon uh, Lakidu. Yeah, thank you, Shamika. Now I'm going to show how it works. Now, the flow chart, which is visible to you, gives out a clear explanation about the workflow of the system step by step. Yeah, now I invited GP to continue next segment. Thank you, Lakidu. Um, so now I'm going to talk about 
one of the main segments in today's presentation, um, the prototype. So let's take a look. So at first, we are going to disclose some facts about the prototype that we're going to show later. So mainly in this, um, here you can see, uh, we have given a 3D model diagram of the prototype to show the elements that we have included in the real prototype uh, video. So here you can see a train, um, an ultrasonic sensor. With the two lines, you, uh, you, uh, it's depicted um, the ultrasonic uh, waves traveling back and forth. And the toy car represents the obstacle in the path of the railway. Now, let's take a look at the demonstration. So now I'm going to give you a small demonstration about how the real prototype works. So the ultrasonic sensor, which is fixed externally um, in the train, transmits ultrasound waves continuously in a 90 degree angle forward. So when these ultrasound waves collides with an object within the path of the train, these ultrasound waves travel back, okay? These ultrasound waves travel back with a frequency range in it. So the receiver part in the ultrasonic waves absorbs these ultrasonic, uh, sorry, ultrasound waves. So what happened is that um, a monitor is installed inside the train, okay? So the monitor and the ultrasonic wave, uh, sorry, ultrasonic sensor is connected with a connecting cable. So the information software installed inside the monitor will only detect obstacles like animals, like elephants, humans, and vehicles. So if the uh, frequency range detected by the ultrasonic wave matches to the ultra, um, so the, uh, sorry, to the frequency ranges um, installed inside the information system, it will show the barrier type and the distance between the train and the obstacle. So that the driver will be warned about the obstacle in front beforehand, and um, he can pull the emergency brake and stop the train colliding with the obstacle. So to give you a, a further explanation, ultra uh, advanced ultrasonic sensors have the ability to detect an obstacle from 200 to 350 meters. And when an emergency brake is pulled in a train, approximately it takes about 150 meters. So here you can see that the train uh, do not collide with the uh, obstacle in front. Why? There's about 200 meter gap between the train and the obstacle. So to give you a further more explanation, uh, we have prepared um, a video. Uh, we call it a real prototype. So we have um, made a real prototype to give a clear idea about this innovation. Now let's take a look. Now I would like to call Shamika to talk about the next segment, the benefits. Thank you, Gidmi. Let's move on to talk about benefits produced by this innovation. There are approximately six benefits. The main benefit produced is decrease of death rate of animals and 
humans due to accident in railway crossing next reduction of money spent on repairing trains and railways saving money for the government compensating victims is also a benefit improving mental health of train drivers who are traumatized by this accident minimize the number of disability occurs due to railroad accident and at last this product gives out an advantage politically next i am going to talk about the pricing production cost the pricing goes for the elements needed are as follows an advanced ultrasonic sensor cost uh, 36000 rupees uh, hp uh, 23.8 inches display monitor cost uh, 31128 rupees uh approximate staff cost is um, 100000 rupees uh the information software is about 25000 rupees uh in summary the total production cost 192128 rupees <clears throat> in brief in as a selling price is about 292128 rupees the profit that we expect initially is only 100000 rupees as this this is the initial stage we do not expect much profit from the system but gradually we will increase the profit rate of the product with the time Uh, now gitmi will talk about next statement thank you shamika um now i'm going to talk about the marketing strategies so um before going to promotions and future developments we need to identify the target customers of our innovative idea so do the trade department is involved in this idea so government is there so government investors locally and internationally and high tech it companies or corporations are the targeted customers of our innovative idea so next we're going to talk about how we are going to do the promotion to the product so to gain the products or the systems customer demand and its popularity the product will be first or initially launched in um locally so this will be considered as a trial period to familiarize the product um with locals and with the world so during this time we will try to attract investors um locally and internationally as this is one of the best products that um a country can use to decrease its annual rate of death happen due to um train accidents so um uh, running away from that um we're going to talk about how we're going to promote this system into the global market so to promote this um product to the global market first thing we're going to do is to apply patent for our system so that no one will able to um manufacture it uh, locally or internationally the next thing is we will work with some investors who are respected by governments of um specific countries so it will be easy for us to contact with um you know the government of the countries so uh, we're going to work with some investors who will help us to financially stabilize our product and help us to improve the quality of the product with the time so uh, we are hoping to increase 
the growth of the system, you know, um, with the time. And hopefully this innovative idea will convert from an innovative idea to a successful business. So um, now I'm going to uh, give Lakindu to talk about the last segment of today's presentation. Yeah, thank you, Gidmi. Uh, now I'm going to uh, discuss the fact about future development. The first one is working with investors respected by government or different countries. Uh, the second fact is this will help to produce to be introduced with the global market. The third one is financially stabilizing the growth of the system. Uh, finally, collaborate with a high information technology company to improve the internal and technical structure of the product. So finally, we have come to the end of the presentation. I would like to thank all of the listeners um, on behalf of the Columbia Engineering Group 2 to attentively, because of attentively listening to the project presentation. Thank you.